talk a little bit about uh, nutrition and training and like how do you get ready for for these races i know you've, you've been planning this for a while so like what what did you do to prepare what's your training routine i guess let's start with that yeah well for me i am um, coming off the back of the euro tour it's we've already got quite a bit of distance you're doing races that are about we did a 17k race i'm pretty sure so you still got a little bit of base there that you can work with but definitely coming over to hawaii and doing the m2m and Doing a few longer runs is what you need to actually get your body ready to feel all the fatigue during the race. So um, yeah, I definitely um, try to get a few longer runs in and like try and stack it up. If I do a two hour paddle in the morning, I'll, for a big day for me, I'll do a two hour paddle in the morning and then I'll go back out probably another three, four hours later and do another two hour paddle just a recovery pace. And your body actually, you can feel all the fatigue and like it actually is a hard session even though it's only a two hour block you've got a big day it's a big day on the water definitely on an average day like your training day like what do you do like you, you get up early or you like what's yeah. your typical day of training yeah i'll do between one and two sessions a day generally um yeah i'll get up and definitely have a decent breakfast if you've got the time to um i'll um go to the gym and um Either, yeah, do weights or jump on the bike. Um, and do like yeah, a few different um, alternating things on the bike. I might do two 20 minutes flat out as fast as you can go with five minutes rest. If it's just a bike session or weights, I'll do yeah, like 70% reps. And um, yeah, but if it's on the water, um, anywhere between just long slow paddles and I'll do um, one minute sprints for the 10 one minute sprints. What about in between the sprints like how much time do you, do you look at your heart rate or yeah, is there a certain yeah. amount of time you, you wait? Or? Uh, yeah generally I'm even it up one minute on one minute off is like ch depends it changes. It's good to have belief in someone that's trying to help you like, like my training is uh, different to tights but it's all so what does yours look like like, in that, like a training day? So my training day is trying to paddle for at least two hours in the afternoon. I try, try to get 15 k's a session. I try to do that three times a week and I try to do two, two endurance uh, gym sessions where I've got a personal trainer that uh, does lots of high intensity uh, endurance sort of running or all that like light weights but like lots of repetitions like just like training your like training your muscles to to go the distance other than trying to do the heavier stuff like once or twice you're trying to do lots of lots of like little things for a long time and um yeah like i my paddling if i can get a weekend with like like just one day where i can do like a, a two to three hour paddle like that's that's really good to finish off the week but i i find that if i paddle if I'm doing 15 k's in flat water every day, my body does start to get tired and also trying to do gym sessions, your body is getting really tired. So it's really important to have at least one full rest day, otherwise your body starts shutting down. So um, yeah, like if you can really, for, for, like for M2O, you should be trying to do at least five days a week of training and yeah, really trying to work, like work up your, uh, your kilometers for three hours in flat water. Um, to be able to complete a race that possibly goes for five hours plus um, downwind. So yeah, it's really important to know how far you can actually paddle in the flat before you throw yourself out in the big ocean. And yeah, like yeah. it's all gonna be a big experience, but. Yeah, so and from my experience too, like I've, this is gonna be my ninth time doing the M2O race. And like, especially when you get older, I'm 50 years old now, so you don't recover as easily or as quickly. So. Uh, the rest and recovery is really important. I think like when I did my first race, I kind of overtrained and then I was kind of already kind of tired or exhausted going into the race and then that's hard, it's hard to perform. So you want to really be fresh and ready to go when the, when the race hit, comes, you know, so even the week before you don't want to do as definitely like scale back your training a lot. And yeah. then for me also, it's really important is flexibility and like, you know, being like having long stretch out limber muscles. You don't want to be like tight, like a, you know, like you said, and, and it's also like if you do weight training, yeah, like you said, you want to build like the, those, the kind of the slow twitch muscles. It's not like the high, you know, fast twitch, like high power muscles. You don't need like be all bulky and stuff. It's more about the 
having the endurance, right? Yeah. So those are all important things, for, especially for a long race like the Molokai race. And, and that one really work, what it comes down to is like the last part really, like the first two thirds of the race is, is pretty easy. It's kind of like the first part of the M, M to M race, the Maui to Molokai race. So you're just going across the channel and it's, it's pretty straightforward. But then at the end, it just kind of gets harder and harder. Where the Maui to Molokai gets easier and easier, kind of better and better at the end. It's like the opposite. And um, Molokai to Oahu, it just gets harder and harder and you kind of, get into this it feels almost like quicksand you're paddling in quicksand and it's just like that's where you have to um, kind of just get get tough and keep going and uh, keep a positive state of mind it's really important it's yeah. gonna be a big experience I've got no idea what to expect so yeah. it's all it's all cool to, cool to hear well, that you, you did it last year so I mean you, you would agree right that the last part is like that's where it's, it becomes a mental mental game almost more than it's here like your body starts <laughs> to shut down but your your mind just has to you know, tell your body to keep you know, just keep going. <laughs> You'll get there eventually. <laughs> and it doesn't look like you're getting any closer. Like you see, you see Coco Creator, and you're like, oh, I'm pretty close. And then like half an hour later, it's like, oh, I'm, now I'm really close. <laughs> but I'm, it's still pretty far away. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Um, and you've got to paddle back up in the mind game. Oh. Then, yeah. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah, go check it out. If you like it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Aloha. Mm -hmm.